Well, today I'm starting a series on the book of Acts. And the reason for this is that I realized that um, some of us are looking to see how we can model the church of the 21st century in an authentic way. And I believe the book of Acts gives us a very, very powerful insight into uh, how we should be perceiving the church of the present and perhaps more importantly the church of the future. I'm very grateful for um, some of the excellent uh, preaching and teaching I've heard from Father Gary Buckby of recent weeks uh, because he in um, our parish has been preparing the people for a time of change and transformation and um, I'll be the first to admit that um, Father Gary is far more eloquent than I am. I think what I can offer you however in this series of videos is an informal and personal look at where we are and where we're going and where we have been um, in a way that I hope will be very relatable to you perhaps in a small group setting and that's something that I am experienced in and have some measure of background in over the decade. So let's start with prayer shall we? Heavenly Father, as we come before the Word of God and the presence of the Holy Spirit and our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Word, I ask that you might open all of our ears to your Word and the eyes of our heart to understand and to comprehend the great riches that you have bestowed upon us, members of the Church, the body of Christ here on earth. And I pray that this might be one step in the avenue of change that you desire to bring your body into as we prepare ourselves for the eventual return of our Lord Jesus Christ and um, our own passing from this life into the glories of heaven. So we pray and ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. If we look at the book of Acts, as many of you will know already, it's really a continuation of the book of Luke, the Gospel of Luke. And Luke really, Luke and Acts are really one, a continuation of the one book, the book of Luke. Um, and we can find this out, if we look at chapter 1, we see that Luke starts off with, In my first account, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day when he was taken up to heaven having first instructed the apostles he had chosen through the Holy Spirit. Some people have said that the book of Acts is the book of the Holy Spirit, the Acts of the Holy Spirit. And it's interesting, right there in verse 2 of the book of Acts, Luke makes reference to the centrality of the Holy Spirit in the church. So here we have right from the very beginning the third person of the Trinity highlighted and he will be continue to be highlighted throughout all chapters of the book of Acts. We can discern, just an overview now, we can discern from the book of Acts um, the practice of the early church in terms of orthodox faith, Catholic faith with a small c, of how the Church of Christ began its journey into all the world to preach the Gospel and to make disciples of all nations. Um, and so in a way when we look at the Acts of the Apostles we are seeing a, a motion picture if you like or a, or a snapshot in time that bypasses the last 2,000 years. So how do we read the book of Acts? I would suggest to you that we look at the book of Acts 
as a living template to uh, that is a guidebook to the principles of faith and the practice of faith, how it was then, and it gives indications of how our faith can be informed today. I think primarily it gives a very clear distinction of that which is orthodox belief in the terms of true faithful belief in Christ and that which is unorthodox or which is a perversion of the faith. Because not only do we have the victories of the faith in the book of Acts, but we also see the failures and the confusions and the detours that occurred. And most importantly, we find out how to address them. So very important, the book of Acts is an exceptionally important book for us in the 21st century. Um, I've written here that it's um, a fascinating vignette into everyday life of your average Christian, if there is such a thing, of the first century believers. And I think it also highlights the blockages to renewal and revival that we face today and also gives indicators of how we can prepare ourselves as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, members of the body of Christ, regardless of, regardless of denomination, of how we can prepare ourselves for a renewed and vigorous, vital church in the 21st century that is also relevant. Surely one of our challenges today is to have relevance, authenticity, and faithfulness. Relevance, authenticity, and faithfulness. So, relevance to the 21st century, authenticity to the scriptures, to the word of God, to the purposes of God, and faithfulness in the execution of our life witness. And I think those three create a sense of discipleship. And we're talking about not creating loads of local clubs that call themselves Christian, but we're talking about being formed into the image and likeness of Jesus Christ, both individually in our hearts and as a living community of faith. That, I think, is the challenge for the church of the 21st century. And it certainly was the challenge that our brothers and sisters of the first century faced as well. Right, with that introduction, let's have a look at the chapter 1 of the book of Acts and see whether this importance of the Holy Spirit that we mentioned in verse 2 continues on, and if so, what it means for us today. So here we have verse 3. In the time after his suffering, the suffering of Jesus, he showed them, that's the apostles, the disciples, in many convincing ways that he was alive, appearing to them over the course of 40 days and speaking to them about the reign of God. Now we're living in the days of the reign of of God in heaven and we have delegated authority as believers here on earth representing representing Jesus Christ to see that authority in our lives and our homes and our families and that authority is primarily exercised first of all through our prayer connection with God so how does that prayer connection take place let's read on here on one occasion when he met with them he told them not to leave Jerusalem. Wait rather for the fulfillment of my father's promise of which you have heard me speak. So this promise that Jesus is about to tell his disciples is not the first time he's spoken of it. He says, the fulfillment of my father's promise which you have heard me speak. Of, and verse 5 
John baptized with water. But within a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Again here, in verse 5, centrality of the Holy Spirit. And without the active working of the Holy Spirit in the church in the 21st century, then we cannot expect to see the types of results that we see recorded in the book of Acts. It is absolutely nonsensical, it makes no sense whatsoever for us to believe that we can see the results of the book of Acts unless we use that the resources given to the book of Acts and the primary resource is the infilling of the Holy Spirit the infusion of power of the Holy Spirit, the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the comfort of the Holy Spirit, and obedience to the Holy Spirit. Without these, then frankly, we're delusional if we think the church can ever achieve what it's commanded to achieve by her Lord and Master, Jesus Christ. Now, I'm totally aware but some people will say, well, the Holy Spirit was given to the church, and therefore the church has the Holy Spirit already. And yes, of course the Holy Spirit has the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has the church, or well, the church has the Holy Spirit. But my question is, do you have the Holy Spirit in an active and living sense in your life? Or is he simply a concept? Is he a construct? that we doctrinally believe in but have yet to experience because it's the experience of the Holy Spirit however you want to term it whatever theological terms you wish to clothe it with it's the experience of the Holy Spirit that transforms life that turns us from poor sinners saved by grace by I'm just going to church and making it through life. I'm just holding on to the old rugged cross and transforms us into resurrection people, the Easter people, if you like, the people infused with power, with God's vision, with God's power and anointing in our lives, in, I might add, all humility, in all surrender, in faithfulness to our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I've gone on for 13 minutes. I'm having a hard time discerning really the length of these videos that is suitable for you. But if you're in a home group, I think 13 or 14 minutes is a pretty good preach because I want to give you an opportunity now to talk and to share amongst yourselves as to uh, first of all, the relevance of the book of Acts to your community today and to your life today. Um, you might want to consider reading this first chapter together um, when this video talk ends. And then you might want to discuss um, what it means to receive the Holy Spirit, what concerns, what fears you might have. And you may then wish to... Um, also pray for one another and that prayer will depend on where you are on the journey of faith it might be a prayer to ask the Lord Jesus to reveal himself to you for the first time it might be a prayer to ask the Lord to help us to be walking in obedience it might be a prayer of waiting on the Spirit of God to break strongholds in an individual's life, it may indeed be a prayer to ask for the infilling and the endowment of power of the Holy Spirit in your life. That's up to you in your own home group. So I hope this has been a blessing to you. And uh, please do contact me and let's be in communication, especially those of you that are using these times with John Ruffle for your own home group building the faith and the community of God.
Amen.